I'm doing well. How are you doing, buddy? Uh, I am doing um, uh, pretty good. You know, things getting a little crazy at the house. I don't know, this time of year. Well, yeah, what's going on? A lot of uh, shopping for sweater vests? <laughs> yes, somebody actually... <laughs> Somebody, uh, somebody said, uh, somebody commented. I don't know where I wore. So I've been wearing the sweater vest a lot lately on uh, television, and I got, I did get some grief. Somebody said, like, I thought you were going to retire those after Rick Santorum, but I'm actually now, I'm actually uh, now wearing the sweater vest in uh, support of Santorum 2016. Oh, okay. Because I thought it was you. I was like watching TV, and I saw you, and I was pretty sure it was you who was like just railing against that UN treaty. The disabilities one. Ah, uh, no. And I was like, what's Sam in his sweater vest? And I was like, oh, wait, that's <laughs> Santorum. Okay. <laughs> no, no, that was not me. They didn't, um, I didn't have the opportunity to go on to rail against that, uh, the, if the passing of the treaty, which uh, was based upon our American law and would not change our American law one bit, but would bring the rest of the world, or at least uh, those who signed on to that treaty, up to our standards in terms of treating uh, people with disabilities. But God forbid, I mean, right. literally, I guess, literally God forbid. God forbade. Yes, God uh, forbade it. Um, uh, even, you know, the, 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 the guy who, who pushed for it in 1990 uh, was a Republican president, and the guy who pushed for it in the Senate was a Republican presidential candidate in 1996, but uh, you know, we don't want to actually uh, look back at uh, a time when the Republican Party put people up who may have been conservative, but still actually had uh, both of their cerebral, cor- you know, their cerebral cortex working, both hemispheres connected to each other. We, we, uh, we weren't firing. planning. We weren't planning on talking about this, but I mean, can you imagine what 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 Bob Dole was feeling? I mean, they literally wheel him into the Senate. Uh, in a wheelchair because he's you know he's old now. He's and, almost ninety, yeah. And uh, and he was in World War Two, which we have to you know had his arms shattered. Yeah. So let's all say it. I mean that has to put enough years, I would think, on your life. That the fact that he is almost ninety is amazing. You know, it's amazing says what our, the U.S. healthcare system would do if we would actually include everybody in it. But I won't talk about that anymore. Let's get back to Bob Dole. Well, they br- they bring him into the Senate to watch this vote. And I guess maybe to pre- I mean I don't I you know I I don't know if they they anticipated like there's no way they're going to be uh, this many Republicans who will block uh, ratification because you need uh, two thirds to ratify a treaty and uh, I mean can you imagine I mean I you know I'm not uh, I, I generally don't feel bad for politicians in any circumstance frankly uh, <clears throat> but I actually sort of felt like God that that must have been just Horrible. I mean, do you know, because this is a guy who was for the Republicans, a major player in American politics for the Republican Party over the past whatever it was, 30 years. And Probably one of the is, most successful majority leaders, you know, I would think, if you count success as in working with the other party and getting stuff done. And he um, and he came in and just basically Thirty nine Republican senators just sort of lined up to spit in his face. I mean, it was just it. I I, I I'm Here's rarely struck by even, stuff yeah. like that. But I was really I I I I I I was just sort of stunned by the whole thing. It, it, it was stunning that they brought him in and, and they did that. Here here is where it gets more stunning. Um, you had five sitting there, six I think, if I'm counting correctly. One was a Democrat at the time, Dick Shelby. Um, but you have five, at least five or six of them. Let's see: Shelby, Grassley, Orrin Hatch, um, Thad Cochran. I'm missing one or two who voted for that bill in 1990 because they were there. So they voted for it then. Uh, that's the start to tell you how much that party has changed and how people that used to be considered sort of reasonable, sort of center right or or con- just conservatives, but conservatives you could do business with, like Orrin Hatch. And Chuck Grassley, which if you know if you follow his Twitter feed, you know he's gone completely off the. He's a complete nutball at this point. But, mm-hmm. um, um, and I recommend everybody do follow his Twitter <laughs> feed because there's lots of good fun. You find it about like dead deer he encounters on the road and stuff. It's excellent stuff. Um, but these guys, all who voted for it back then, somehow are now ideologically opposed to it and voted against it this time. In addition to that. Three people that actually had supported it originally backed off supporting it. I don't know who it was. I read Gail Collins had a great column on this the other day. Um, but J- the, Jerry Moran, the, the Republican senator from, from Kansas, actually put out a joint press release with John McCain, I think in April or May, supporting it. He voted against it. 
Thad Cochran originally voted for it this time, like he did last time, but then changed his vote when it was clear it was going to go down. And there was a third one who voted for it in committee, and I couldn't find out who that was who voted against it. So essentially, um, the, I mean, that's, that's what we're talking These guys are so scared still of these Tea Party cranks, apparently, that even the ones that would theoretically be reasonable, I think some of them have just lost their minds. I think Grassley is just crazy at this point. But others, I just think, are so scared. It's, just, it's pathetic, really. Yeah, I mean, I think this is the, you know, this is the what, what, what we've definitely been talking about for a while, which is, you know, you can hear a couple of... Um, of national Republicans say, we've got to change this, we've got to reform, we've got to reach out to the American people and not be so insane. But they are beholden to their electoral base, which they've created, and it controls, you know, 39 of those uh, senators. And it's basically like, if you in any way um, uh, function as a rational, empathetic human being, you're, you're out of the club. And uh, we're going to vote you out, or we're going we're gonna to primary you. 